Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another quick pick prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the lightweight bout between Matus Gamrot versus um, Dan Hooker. And how do I feel about this one right here is I'm going low confidence Dan Hooker to pull off the upset and beat Matus Gamrot. And um, yeah, the more I look at Dan Hooker in this one, the more I see, you know, he was a little, he was a little bit, a lot of bit, um, or I guess his losses were overstated for the most part. We look at him, oh, this guy was look like he's going to be in his career. He's this, he's that, and all this stuff. But um, he lost to Islam Makhachev, who's one of the greatest fighters of all time. You know, really, you could argue that he's the greatest lightweight of all time already. And he fought him on short notice. Tough matchup, I and mean, you took that fight on short notice. Got submitted by him. Really not the worst loss at all. Like, <laughs> that's not a worst loss. Not a bad loss or anything. And then... He, lost, he dropped down to 45 a weight class. He had no business being. Well, he was at 45 before. It's not like he'd never been at a weight class. But, you know, it, it was a weight class. He left because it was too much a weight. It, was a, it, was, it just was not his weight class. He knew it was in his weight class back then. Then, it, it's all dumb. You lose one fight on short notice. Then you're like, I'm going to go to... I guess he felt like um, Islam was a champion. He already lost him. So, he, it would be hard to get a rematch. Maybe that was what his, his daughter was behind that. But one loss, people have plenty of times got rematches, you know, for belts after already having lost to the current champ. So it wasn't like he had two losses to the champ. So it didn't make no sense to go to weight class you struggled to make like a whole decade ago, basically. And you went up and had much greater success, much sooner, much quicker at 55. You lose one fight to arguably one of the greatest lightweights, if not the greatest lightweights of all time. And even at that point, he was still like a very highly touted, scary boogeyman of the weight class. You know, he just wasn't the champion, I guess, just yet. And you lose them on short notice because that's a hard, that's a that's guy you need a full camp for. Even with full camp, nobody beat him really right now at lightweight. But then you decide to go to 45 for whatever reason. And also, I think at this time, his training partner was still, Volkanovski was still the champ. So it just all seemed don't make no much sense. But it is what it is. But yeah, he, he went down there at a weight class that he struggled to make and for the top five guy and got starts because it just not was his weight class. But at 55, for the most part, he's been a monster. And now I'm deep into his prediction. But yeah, I'm talking a lot about Dan Hooker. But Matus Gamrot's a solid fighter. Great cardio, great chain wrestling. It's a very good re It's a good reason why. I mean, it's a very good reason why I'm low comfortable. one. Gamrot's a solid dude. He's been winning. He's been, been overlooked, but he's been winning. Winning, winning, winning. What do you say? He got dropped this or this fight was closer than it should be. Or he won only because he got injured. He's been winning. And for the most part, he's been looking good in this fight. Now he's been been in gifts so much outside of the C.R. Ockerman fight. That was a gift. But he still looked good in that fight, especially in the rest of Barman, but that was a gift. The other ones, he was doing well. Fazeev, he was winning up until the injury, so I until Fazeev's injury, so yeah, that's his flowers. But back to Dan Hooker. No, he's been a monster for this fire one. He's been Yeah, at lightweight. We outside of those um the loss to Makchev, that's really he's been a monster to this fire one. Oh, and also Michael Chandler. That was another thing. The Michael Chandler, that was another loss, but but I'm I'm yeah, I'm rapping way too much here, rapping way too much. But um yeah, Dan Hooker, you know, at his best at lightweight, he's a monster through three rounds. Where we saw him at his peak have issues was in the fourth and fifth. This but this is just a three round fight, and those were also against guys that pushed the pace and strike. Like Felder, Felder pushed the pace and striking. Poirier pushed the pace in the striking. Matus Gamera is not really a, a pace pusher in his striking; it's more so in his wrestling. And Hooker has shown a pretty decent wrestling defense, pretty good understanding of grappling outside of Makhachev, who will make anybody look like they don't know how to grapple, even Charles Oliveira. And yeah, so Hooker, I feel like he can address the grappling of Gamera. It's not like Gamera's a guy that's very good at controlling guys at a high level. Like, maybe at the lower level, he can control you, some issue. But as far as at the higher level, he's not, he can't really hold guys down that well. He can put you a good pace and put you back down, but can't really do much there or hasn't really shown the ability to do much there at a high level. So I feel like Hooker can do a good job of stuff his takedowns and get back up from his takedowns. And I think Hooker has good yeah, counter wrestling. He has good knees to so maybe intercept Gamera. He's coming down. I think he's the much better striker. And three rounds, he's a beast through three rounds. And I think he's coming off two a uh, two-fight winning streak right now. I think his confidence is starting to peak back up, and he's still very much at a good age. So it's not like he's 45 years old or 38, 39. He's like 35, 34, maybe even younger. So he's at a, still a good age. It's not like Gamera's so, so young. I think Gamera's like 32, 33. But um, don't quote me a lot of things. But I got still, by the way, both guys still in a very good age range. And I think Dan Hooker's going to do a good job to, to defend the wrestling. I'll strike Gamera. I think he stops him in the third round. And also, Gamera's been getting dropped a lot. He got dropped by Dariush. 
he got dropped by um yeah Darius Saryakaran, RDA, and I think Hook gonna be the defending takedowns, drop him, you know hurt him a couple of times, and I think he put some weight in the third round. I think he's gonna be able to do a good job defending the takedown and also do a good job applying the pressure once he defends those takedowns and also making pay make Gamera pay for for um his takedown attempts whether he gets them or not, but especially when he defends them make him pay for those takedowns. Push the pace on the feet, push the pressure on the feet, and not really allow, you know, this gets so caught up by what Gamera doing, but stick to what he's doing, defending the takedown, and make Gamera have to feel the pressure, make him feel the sting, feel the power, feel the, feel the volume, feel the threat of the striking, make it present and make it a, a real thing. And I think he puts some weight in the third round. And I think Dan Hooker walks away with the victory. So in this one, I got Dan Hooker via third round TKO.